Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to the last Ian Mitzion, Mesech Aschala, Perek Dal, and Mishnah Yud Aleph. The Mesech that ends, ends, ends off when it says, Ariston Hevi Bikura Mapamya. Ariston was someone, either he lived in Eretz Israel or he lived in Syria. He brought Bikura from Mapamya, which is apparently uh, a city in Syria, Aleppo, I don't know where it is. Someone who acquires, he grew it apparently in Syria, who acquires Bikurim in Syria is like one who acquires Bikurim in the suburbs of Jerusalem where I live, you know, so it's the same thing. Now, obviously Syria we mentioned is not technically there, it's Israel. Um, the distinction over here is what I've said in the previous couple of shiur. I'm just say it again and just emphasize it and explain it even a little more. Is that there's two different types of mitzvahs at Tluis Baaretz, right? Things that only apply in Eretz Israel. There's mitzvahs at Tluis Baaretz that literally mean Tluis Baaretz in the physical land of Eretz Israel, like Chumas and Maestros, right? Depend on the growth that goes from the ground. They have to grow in the physical land of Israel. And therefore, when Ole Bavel came, Ezra came, he didn't reconquer certain cities. So therefore, the physical land is no longer part of Israel, right? It was only, in your times of Yeshua, belonged to Israel. It doesn't belong to Israel anymore. It has to be physical land that's under the jurisdiction of Israel, Israeli government. Um, that's considered, uh, and it depends on Ole Bavel, when they reconquered the land, was it part of it? Syria was not, just like Betar was not. Um, and then there's Mitzvah Tzluyus Ba'aretz, which is more like a virtual thing. This is a dependent on Eretz Israel, not dependent on the ground of Eretz Israel, dependent on the boundaries of Israel or living in Israel, the Mitzvah of living in Israel. And the Mitzvah of living in Israel, we do say Kedushon Hashanah, Kidsha, Lashaisa, Vikidsha, Laasid Lavo. Um, so there's a split in Psach Halacha. This is very relevant to a lot of other Mitzvah, a lot of other Shiurim. But uh, this is a very important chiluk that I'm making, distinction that I'm making, is that in terms of living in Eretz Israel, not growth from the actual land of Eretz Israel, but in terms of living in Eretz Israel, we do say that when Yeshua gave out the land, a portion of the land, those are the boundaries, those are the official boundaries of Israel forever. Those are the boundaries of Israel forever. And when it comes to mitzvahs of living in Israel, like Chala, Chala is one of the mitzvahs, Bavacham al Aris, when you come and you need dough, it has nothing to do with the wheat in the ground. It's when you, you know, process the wheat and now you put it into flour. You're making the bread. You're making bread in your kitchen. In your, you know, and then the bakery shop. So that is a mitzvah to leave ours. Depending on the living in Eretz Israel, and there we say the original boundaries are in effect. So Syria would be part of that. And here, this Mishnah adds that Bikurim also. Bikurim is the same idea as Chala to give thanks to Hashem. Bikurim is not a mitzvah depending on the physical growth in Eretz Israel. It depends, like it says, Kikona in Syria. It depends on Bikurim means when you want to use the Shivas Haminim in Eretz Israel, so you give. Uh, first, you give to the Kohanim who acts as a shliach of Hashem, representative of Hashem. You're thank giving thanksgiving to Hashem for these beautiful uh, shivas haminim, which are better in Eretz Israel than elsewhere in the world, these seven species of fruits. So therefore, that's a mitzvah of living in Eretz Israel, the quality of living in Eretz Israel, that you have such nice fruits to eat, not the growing of them. Right, Chuz and Maisos really is, you know, it's an income tax. So it depends, it starts when it grows, when it grows from the ground, right? The ground is yours, part of your income, which starts from the growth, you have to give right away to us and Maestros. Bikurim has nothing to do with that. Bikurim is, you know, eating great grapes that grow in Eretz Israel. It tastes really better here in Eretz Israel. Do they? I don't know, but it tastes better in Eretz Israel, apparently. So it's a living, part of the living Eretz Israel in there. And for that, we do say, the the virtual boundaries. So therefore, even if in Syria, they accept it because technically it applies. If you didn't grow it, right? Even if you didn't grow it, even if you just bought it in Syria, it's a mitzvah about living and enjoying the fruit, the special fruit, and that's because we're giving it to Hashem first. And that applies based on the virtual borders, which is the Kedusha Rishona. Hope you enjoy Masechus Chala. Stay tuned for more great Shiura Masechus Orla as we continue on with the march through Seder Zerayim. I think after Masechus Orla is Bikurim, and then on Seder Moed. Hope you enjoyed today's share. See you in the next one.